start off, you're going to be looking for the Clone Marshal Commander Jump Pack. You can find it just by typing in Marshal under Ace Arsenal. If you hit Escape and go to your Options, Controls, Configure Add-ons, you're going to scroll down to the RD501 Jump Pack. So, in here, you're going to be rebinding these keys. So, first off, for your Jump Key, you're going to want to delete the existing key bind, and by default we recommend people bind it to control spacebar. I use my own binds. So next, you're going to go to the cycle jump type left. For this, you can go with control victor, control V. Once you've done that, hit OK, and that will save it. Hit OK again. Go back to controls, go over to common, and scroll down. Now, you've just bound a key to your V key, so you want to be really careful if you have anything bound for your get out or eject keys for V. If these keys are bound, and you try and switch your jump type while in a vehicle, you will eject. Keep that in mind if you want to unbind these, that is up to you. Okay. Now, okay. now that you have your keybind set up and you have your correct jump pack, you can cycle between your jump types using Control-V, as we just talked about, and you'll see at the top right that it shows you a short jump and a forward jump. Each of these has a cost associated with them out of a current energy. So, if you were to use a forward jump, which costs 50 out of your 100 energy, you would have 50 energy remaining. If you were to use a short jump, 30. In order to best use short jumps, you want to make sure that you are looking slightly above the horizon, as all short jumps are directed based on where your character is oriented. If you look straight up when you do a short jump, you'll get the maximum vertical altitude. If you look straight across, you'll go a very short distance. But if you go somewhere in the middle, you can get the maximum horizontal distance by launching yourself in a short arc. This is very useful for doing something what we call skipping, which is multiple successive short jumps across the ground in order to travel as quickly as you can while staying low and concealed. Next up, we will cover... Now, in order to mount small buildings such as houses or random VR blocks, you can use short jumps to go up to the edge. When you get to the edge, you can hit your enhanced movement key that you bound in basic in order to climb up the side. If you don't have that, there are many tutorials on YouTube on how to bind. If you need to get down, you can jump off the roof. Now, when using the forward jump, you are able to propel yourself 50 meters forwards and 20 meters up. This is a set figure, and you cannot adjust yourself midair. Even if you turn to the side, try and adjust yourself, you will not change your trajectory. The only way to adjust your jump trajectory while mid-air is to use another jump. So, you can use a forward jump, followed by a short jump, and that will bring you straight down onto the point you want to land on. You can chain these jumps together in many different ways to get different uh, jump trajectories, altitudes, location landings. This is useful for getting very highly specific landings, like if you want to hit a very direct target. You can change yourself midair to get it. Alright, so now we're going to learn how to climb buildings. So, first you're going to want to start off by cycling to your forward jump. This will give you a decent amount of altitude when you jump up. You're going to hit your forward jump, and it will launch you up the wall. And you'll hit repel self. If you want to, you can use both of your bursts of long jump get yourself up to the wall. So, in order to continue scaling, you will detach your repel device, activate your long jump again, and again, and then repel self. This is best used on flat surfaces. So, to get off, you can fall and short jump down, and that will cancel all downward fall damage. 
when dealing with a building that doesn't have a nice flat surface like the first building, you'll have to do a reverse jump. This will be done by heading towards the base of the structure, looking away from the structure, performing a long jump. You'll do a 180 and look back at the original structure. And then activate your repel just as you did before. Once your energy is recharged, you'll detach, jump out, and jump back. Alright. Finally, for structures that will go over 100 meters in height, you need to remember that you'll go into a freefall animation when scaling these buildings. So, again, we'll do a reverse jump here because it's not perfectly flat. Attach our repel line. Okay, so for this last bit, I will be describing drops because I don't have a lat and I'm on a time crunch. So to start off, we have our halo drop. This is a vertical drop done typically from anywhere from two to four or even higher altitude. So you will be going straight down from the lat's position to the drop zone. Uh, this will typically be said as a halo drop high altitude. You start from high altitude and you activate your jump pack at a low altitude to prevent fall damage and get yourself accurately onto the target. Please make sure you stay directly over the target for the entire duration of your drop. Next up, we have DZ Hayho. This is for a Hayho drop, high altitude, high opening. This will be done by dropping out of the lat from the same type of altitude point, but you'll be getting some actual horizontal distance as opposed to just vertical altitude dropping. So, here you will be holding W the entire time while orienting yourself in the direction that you are attempting to go. So if your drop zone is you know, two kilometers to your south, you'll be heading two kilometers, you'll aim south and be holding W the entire time. You will then activate your long jumps on your jetpack the entire way down. Every single time you can activate your long jump, you will jump, hold W the whole time. I cannot stress this enough. Hopefully you will make it to your drop zone. Hayhos can make it two kilometers in horizontal distance for every four kilometers altitude or one kilometer horizontal to altitude. Lastly, we have hot drops. These are done at a lower altitude by a moving lat in impulse. You will drop out of the lat when the, you know, after the pilot has called green light, you will jump out of the lat. However, you need to make sure you are jumping at the correct distance. The pilot may call green light a kilometer away from the objective over here, maybe near DZ Hayho distance, two kilometers away, but you need to drop at about 500 meters altitude. Sorry, 500 meters horizontal distance from your objective. If you drop earlier, you will probably not make it. You can reverse yourself and jump back towards the point if you overshoot. You can also direct yourself if you hit it the first time. Hot drops have a bit more leeway, 
but they're also going to be much faster paced. Good luck.